Hey, what's good, champions? Arian Tyson here. Listen, I wanted to shoot this video because one of the things that I've noticed is that people will go out of their way to try and test your gangster. They will go out of their way to deliberately make you angry. So I want to share with you some things that I've learned. It's still a work in progress, but have helped me along the way to remain calm when others are angry. And I'm going to give you a little context as to why this is important and then share some ways. So this may be a longer video than normal. We'll just see how it goes. Because I just am going to one take this thing. But if you get value from this video, feel free to like, comment and share this video. So as human beings. We all have an idea in our heads about how things are supposed to be. And sadly, this is what often messes us up the most. We get frustrated when things don't play out the way that we expect them to. And when people don't behave like they're supposed to, we expect our family to act a certain way, our friends to always be kind, and strangers to be less difficult. And then when reality hits us and everyone seems to be doing the opposite of what we expect them to do, we get triggered. We get angry. We get frustrated. Arguments ensue. Tears flow, et cetera, et cetera. And if you can relate in any way at all right now, then it's time to remind yourself of the truth. You cannot control how other people behave. You cannot control how other people behave. You can't control everything that happens, control freaks. What you can control is how you respond to it all. So let's let calmness be your superpower. When you feel like your lid is about to blow or you're about to blow a gasket, take a long, deep breath. Deep breathing releases tension. It calms down our fight or flight reactions. And it allows us to quiet our anxious nerves so we can choose more constructive responses, no matter the situation. You ain't always got to have the last word. You ain't always got to give somebody a piece of your mind. Ladies. You ain't always got to use sign language. Ladies and gentlemen. Because we're all guilty of it at some point. And oftentimes we don't even realize that we're doing it. So, for example, do your best to inhale and exhale next time another driver cuts you off in traffic. Now, we know how, how real road rage is, especially coming out of the, the pandemic. In a recent poll, we found out that overreacting while fighting traffic was the most commonly cited reason for over, overreacting on an average day. Just imagine if all the drivers on the road took deep breaths before making nasty hand gestures or screaming obscenities. Now, of course, it can drive us crazy when we don't get what we expect from people, especially when they're being rude and difficult. But trying to change the unchangeable, wanting others to be exactly the way we want them to be, just does not work. It is unrealistic. It is counterproductive. And you're playing yourself. So we've got to make changes and lead by example. Parents, here's the way of being that I've been cultivating and advocating for. To breathe deeply and often. Also to remind myself that I cannot control other people. To remind myself that other people can handle their lives however they choose. 
one of the biggest ones is to not take their behavior personally. No matter how reckless or idiotic I may think they are, to still find a way to see the good in them. To let go of the ideals and expectations I have about others that causes unnecessary frustration. That's how you have people living rent free in your head. You got to cut that out. To remember that when others are being difficult, they are often going through a difficult time that I know nothing about. And to give them the, the same grace and space that I would expect them to give me if I was having a moment. Being this way, however, takes practice. But in the grand scheme of things, it's worth it. It makes me less frustrated. It helps me to be more mindful. It improves my relationships. It lowers my stress levels. And it allows me to make the world a slightly more peaceful place. So I hope you'll still join me in that. Practice being mindful and calm. So if you're ready to feel more peace and less inner angst, here are some ways that I've learned to remain calm and centered. Even when those around me can't seem to contain themselves. And these principles reinforce the points that I made earlier. And when you consistently practice them, the world within you and around you becomes a lot easier to cope with. So for this video, I'm going to share three. Because I don't want it to be too long, even though I feel like I've been talking long already. So here's what to do. First thing you can do, get comfortable with pausing. Get comfortable with pausing. Don't imagine the worst when you encounter a little drama. When someone is acting irrationally, don't join them by rushing to make a negative judgment call. Instead, pause. And take a deep breath. Inhale, exhale. A moment of calmness in a moment of tension can save you from a hundred moments of regret. Truth be told, you are often most powerful and influential in an argument when you are most calm. Others never expect calmness. They expect you to clap back. They expect you to give them a piece of your mind. They expect you to want to have the last word. They expect yelling. They expect drama. They expect defensiveness. They expect offensiveness and, and lots of back and forth. They expect to leap in the ring and fight. They are ready to defend themselves with slick comments and sly remarks. They're cocked and loaded. But your calm pause, that can really disarm them and put you back in control. So in the midst of getting comfortable with pausing, also think bigger. Think bigger. Imagine a seven-year-old who doesn't get what they want at the moment. They throw a temper tantrum. And this small momentary problem is enormous in their little mind because they lack perspective on the situation. But as adults, as adults, we should know better. And when you know better, you should do better we realize that there are dozens of other things that this seven-year-old could be happier, could do to be happier. Sure, that's easy for us to say we have a bigger perspective, right? But when someone offends us, 
we suddenly have a little perspective again. And this small momentary offense seems enormous and it makes us want to scream. We throw the equivalent of a seven-year-old's temper tantrum. And of course, if we think bigger, we can see that this small thing matters very little in the grand scheme of things. It's not worth our energy. Thus, always remind yourself to be bigger, to think bigger, and to broaden your perspective. And then finally, as I prepare to close this video, the third thing that you can do is, is respect people's differences. Being kind to someone you dislike or disagree with does not mean that you're fake. It means that you're mature enough to control your emotions and do the right thing. Period, point blank, end of sentence. And it's absolutely possible to connect with or even appreciate the company of someone you don't completely agree with. I don't care how long you've known someone. I don't care if you grew up in the same household. I don't care if you're twins. I don't care if you've been married 30, 40, 50 years or more. You don't 100% agree on everything that the other person thinks, says, or feels. You don't. And don't expect them to 100% agree on everything you think, say, or feel either. And just because they may have a disagreement with you does not make them fake. Does not make them not solid. But I have seen folks tuck tail and run. I have seen folks end relationships over disagreements as if one disagreement outweighs 20 years outweighs 30 years outweighs 10 years and I get it certain things are situational however we blow things out of proportion because Many of us have become led by our emotions when that's not how we're supposed to operate. When you make a commitment to, re to remain neutral on matters that don't matter that much and speak respectfully about your disagreements that do matter, both parties can remain calmer and move forward with grace. It's a long process sometimes, but it's worth it in the grand scheme of things. So just keep reminding yourself, keep reminding yourself that what goes around, in fact, at some point does come back around. No one has ever made themselves strong by showing how small someone else is. Just because someone does it differently doesn't make it wrong. And there are many roads to what's right. Because it's situational. And then there are some things that are right that you just don't need to budge on. That you need to stand firm and unapologetic about. That's why you have to pick and choose your battles. Some battles are not worth it. So if you get value from this video, feel free to like, comment, and share this video. I, I prefaced it by saying it was probably going to be a little longer than, than others, but I wanted to provide some perspective and context. And I share with you three ways to remain calm when others are angry. So it's probably going to be a part two, but it won't be as long as this one. <laughs> if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much to those who have respond, who have subscribed recently. I appreciate you. I'm, I, I appreciate you 
choosing to rock with me and I'm going to continue to keep the content coming. As always in life, you have two choices. You can make moves or you can make excuses, but you most certainly cannot do both. It's yours truly, Arian Tyson, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.